Hey everyone, Peaceman coming out chat. And today, doing a quick little video on how you can use this neat interaction that's part of Tilt Brush, and that is for using the grips to scale and shrink your, your play space. So let me go ahead, jump into VR here. This is honestly like, I think one of my most favorite interactions there that we did a video in the past about like bumping the controllers together and causing that to switch your left and right hand. And this is another really cool one. So I'm finally glad that we're able to do this. And post in the comments below what your favorite tilt brush interaction is, because I think that there are so many cool design choices that they made. But getting into this, so I picked this like random forest scene. This actually looks pretty good, although like the, the waving animation is kind of weird. But I just have to press the grips. And then if I bring them together, it shrinks me down. And if I push me out, uh, push the controllers out, I scale up. I think this is most evident in the scene view if you're looking at it. So now I can like lean down and this feels really tiny. And now I can also like zoom in here. I, I, we can play around with like how much we scale when we move these, but now I'm getting to be about that size of the mushroom. And now, it's like about, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's bigger than me. And it's just so cool to just be able to explore scale because that's honestly one of the strong suits of VR. And wow, that looks, looking at the scene view right now, my camera is really tiny. But it gets the job done. It, it leverages scale in such a huge way. And this is something I kind of want to see in a lot more games. So uh, let's just kind of dive into like, this just a small bit of code, but we can dive into like how you can actually implement this in your own games. Alright, so starting off here, go ahead and open up Unity and create a new project. Let's call this Tilt Scale Tutorial. Create that, give it a second to load up. And once we do, we should go ahead and go to the asset store. So I'm just going to grab Steam VR, and then there's this thing called the Hand Painted Forest. And so let me just grab Steam VR real fast. And once we do, I'll actually because I, I realize Steam VR takes a while to load. So I'll let me cut here, and then I'll cut again to show you the hand painted forest. All right. So got in Steam VR, and here's the asset that we're gonna get off the asset store. It's called the hand painted nature kit light. And I actually haven't upgraded to five five one. I think that just literally came out yesterday. Um, haven't gotten a chance to do that, but I plan to. But this asset does require it, so you'll need to upgrade. I happen to already have it saved before they upgrade to 5.1. So, I mean, props to them for updating it. Kind of sucks that they don't support multiple versions, but eh, it is what it is. So, with that kind of taken care of, um, I've actually gone ahead and opened up in... Let me pop this up a little bigger. Here, so it's the Sky, Skyfian's Cat, hand-painted nature, demo, demo one. And so we've gone ahead and opened that. I've already gone ahead and um, this is based off of the project I already built. So the camera rig is already in here. I'm going to zoom into here. I'll also go ahead and accept all the Steam VR settings. So made the right choice. Done. Great. Here's, I mean, it's a really beautiful, really beautiful scene. That's for sure. And so I've gone ahead and... I mean, you can see the position here that I chose. It's kind of arbitrary. But the reason I did it is to put it right next to this mushroom, which is really small, and also this, like, uh, there we go, this tree that's really huge. And I think that gives you the best sense of scale. So speaking of scale, let's... The the way we're going to actually implement tilt scale, it, or that's what I'm calling it anyways, is to change just the scale values here. So if you want, you can make this a 2x2x2x2. Two by two by two by two. I recommend keep all of these scale values the same. The second you change any one of the dimensions, then it warps the whole thing and it's really weird to walk around in. So don't do that. Make sure that the local scale for all of these values stays the same. Uh, let me just go ahead and put it back to 111 for now. But that's basically all we really need to do is get a reference to our camera rig, get a reference to our controllers to be able to grow it and shrink it, and at that point, we pretty much have the script we want. So, go here, go to Assets, create C Sharp script. Let's call this Tilt Scale. And then open it up in Visual Studios. So, 
Let's skip that a second. And once we do, we just, like I mentioned before, we need to get a reference to our public game object camera rig. Camera rig. We need a reference to the Steam VR tracked object left. And we can copy this and paste it for the right. Come on. I'll just do this. So, got the left and right, and we got the camera rig. So, the camera rig is what we're going to scale. The left and right is going to tell us how to scale. The only other thing we need um, is the two. So, to, to actually do this, we want every change to be relative to the previous position. So, when I go move in, I need to know how I'm, that I moved in as opposed to move out, which means I need to keep track of the distance between the controllers and see if I got bigger or smaller. For that, what I'm going to do is just create a prev dist float so to zero f to initialize it. And then an update, what we're going to do is get the, uh, and let's see if I can remember how to do this, so steamvr dot, uh, steamvr controller dot input for uh, int left dot index. Please work. Yes. And then var l l dev equals this. And do the same for the right controller. So right and right. So that's just getting our input controls for the, the left and right hand. And then we need to check if the grips on both are pressed. So for that, just add in an if statement here. And I have this so that I don't have to go and reference it. So it's get press for SteamVR controller dot button mass dot grip. And I don't expect anyone to remember that because it's kind of arbitrary the way that they've namespace stuff. And then we just have to do the same for the right. So actually I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. So we're just checking to make sure that both the left and the right device are pressed. So there we go. Now we need to calculate the distance between our left and right hand. And that's actually really easy. So we're just going to do float dist equals left dot transform dot position minus right dot transform dot position. Put those in parentheses there and then do get ma uh, not dot get magnitude. There we go. So that's the absolute distance between our left and right hand. So now we just need to calculate that delta, which is float delta equals, um, I have it, so I always forget this order, but it is the final, which or the current distance minus the, the previous distance. I'm going to add a quick check in here to make sure that we are moving intentionally. So what ends up happening often with Steam VR is that there is a, a bit of noise as far as, I mean, actually, let me let me show that right now. So let me go ahead and hit run. Turn on the controller here. So if we actually go into, we have it right here. You'll see that, I mean, it's pretty good, but there is a bit of noise for the rotations and the position, especially the position. And I mean, it's very minute, but somewhat significant that like you might move even though you didn't uh, actually intend to move or perceive a movement. So we just add to make sure that we're actually moving a little bit. Just make sure the delta is greater than like say 0.10F. And when we do, then we can just go ahead or in, sorry, this is actually math. It's the absolute value of the delta because otherwise if it could be negative. So you want to make sure that your, your, your check is against a positive value. So with that, just do camera rig dot transform dot local scale plus equals vector 3.1 times time dot delta time just because we're, we're in update so we might as well scale it based on uh, the time in the frame and then the sign of the delta. Uh, sign of delta. 
So what this does is we, if, if we have a vector for the scale that we're adding to each of the components, uh, we just multiply it for whether or not we should shrink or scale it based on how much we're moving in or out. And you can, so right, if you, in the intro, what I did, it's actually pretty small, the, the amount of change, but if you, e you can easily just add in a scalar like, say, 5, which will make that movement feel a lot more smoother and a lot more easier. And that's something just to play with. Uh, it's not terribly complicated, um, and it's just something fun to try out. So the last thing we have to do is the prev distance equals dist. And that's it. Oh, with this, we should have tilt scale. So we can go ahead, add, so yeah, you can see there's the missing script that we needed to write, and it's actually kind of already filling out for itself, which is kind of neat. But yeah, so I mean, it, it already knew what it was supposed to be called, so there's just the camera rig, and the left and right controllers, they're already assigned, you can assign them from the camera rig right here. And with that, I should be just be able to hump, hop into VR right now. Here we go. Yeah, you guys can see it pretty well. Have the controllers here. You can see, yeah, now it's like moving really fast. Um, I would say arguably too fast, but we we do have control of the scale, and I think that's the neat part right there. You might want to play around a little bit with your the noise if check, because otherwise, what might end up happening is, like I said, you get a little too much noise. Um, from like the fine grain movements of the controllers, but um, let me just go ahead and pull that code up uh, right here. It's just, it's just this if check. Just play around with that value just to make sure it feels pretty stable. And then really the core line right here is this. So just taking the local scale, changing it all in the same factor, but um, by the time and the sign, um, and adding whatever multiplier you want. So yeah, that pretty much does it. Really short video, but I think it's just a really cool mechanic to add into any game. And yeah, I let me know in the comments if you choose to use this in your game, and I'd love to check it out. But uh, other than that, um, yeah, just it helps us out a bunch if you like the video and subscribe, and also you can follow us on social. So that pretty much does it for this video. And this has been Fuse Man. I'm signing out.